I confirm that my text is definitely round the right way. This uh, text you can see is uh, correct for you because it's so weird looking at it on my screen. For some reason, it's reversed. Um, so fuchsias, but it could be any flower at all. I'm just using the fuchsia as a kicking off point. It's not that I'm going to do anything. Oh, thanks, Karen. That's awesome. It's not that I'm going to botanically draw the fuchsia, quite the opposite. I'm just using the fuchsia. I've got some here. I'm just going to move them into, into view. Some of these magnificent, uh, fuchsias. And I just love their shape. I think they're like little ballerinas. And um, I love to use them as a launching point for a design. So I've got a little list here of what I'm thinking um, we'll do this morning. If you hopefully you're painting along with me, that's the idea of the live stream. I'm going to talk generally about the supplies I've got here. But in particular, today is a masking fluid exercise. So um, we'll start with drawing it up and then we're going to put the masking fluid down. And I'm hoping it's going to dry in time to add um, some paint on the outside, which brings me to this painting. I've just completed the, a video. Um, I think I uploaded it yesterday in case anyone's seen it. Um, and... I break all the rules of masking fluid. I've always, um, <laughs> thanks, Karen. I've always uh, used masking fluid in, following a particular number of rules that I'd learnt early on, and I just adhered to them, assuming that they were completely right. And so I decided to stop doing that because, because I was making these videos and I would do one stage of the masking fluid and I'd have to wait and go off and, you know, do five other things and come back. And, and there was always this wait time, wait time, wait time. So in this video that I've, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've just uploaded. Uh, hey, Tiffany, that's so cool. In this video about um, Jasmine, which, by the way, could be a beautiful subject for next week, in this subject, I break the rules such as drying the masking fluid on the page. This is a watercolour pour, and you don't want your beautiful brush to come in contact with my wet masking fluid, so it suited this. The other thing, uh, there's another couple of rules that I break in this video, but I digress. Coming back here. Um, oh, Karen says yes to um, Jasmine. It's blooming everywhere at the moment. If you live in uh, Sydney or South um, West New South Wales, you're probably having your um, jasmine bloom all over the place. So we're going to start, we're going to put down a, a thumbnail, then we're going to mask, do some masking fluid. We're going to do masking tape just before the masking fluid. So I've listed a hairdryer because if you're going to paint along with me, that would be really cool. And today, Take the risk, see if you how you go with applying a hairdryer to your masking fluid. So it's a risk day. I'm uh, here to tell you <laughs> if you haven't applied a hairdryer to your masking fluid, which I only did for the first time the other day, then uh, today you might take that leap. Um, and then we'll talk about colour. So uh, the colour discussion takes a little while, so I figured we'd do that after the masking fluid. I'm going to lead you through all of these steps. So that's what I'm thinking the process will be today. That's the painting that I have just uploaded. And I wanted to start by talking about um, where I got the idea for today's painting, which is, uh, this is in my sketchbook. I'll just flip through some of the other pages shortly. But I keep a really big, this is an A3 sketchbook. I keep a really big a3 sketchbook because I found that sometimes I do some really great paintings and I've got no idea what processes I went through to get there. Or sometimes I use some color combinations that I just love and I can't recall how I got to that um, end. So this year I made 2021, the year that I began a sketchbook where I started to write down my processes and it's been really awesome. So I was looking for an idea for today's uh, live stream and found this. Um, I bet I found the idea of this background very likely off Pinterest. I adore Pinterest. I'm there all the time having a look at um, beautiful art and taking ideas from it. In this one, I did a quick grevillea with a triangle in the background. The background is one colour, uh, but two tones of the one colour. 
and these areas are masked. So everything outside the triangle gets some masking fluid and then um, inside the triangle I just painted freehand. That'll be really easy to do, just a little bit time consuming to make sure there's the right amount of paint on your brush. That's what this internal uh, part will be all about. And it's a whole exercise in positive and negative. And um, I thought we might look at warm versus cool when we come to talk about the colours. I'll just flip through and show you what else I've been doing in this sketchbook. This is the sort of thing. Um, here's a photograph. I have a thing for gum leaves and gum trees. Hello, Julie. Welcome. And you love fuchsias too. That's wonderful. It's, it's totally such an easy flower to grow. Yeah, so I um, what I've been doing in the sketchbook is uh, getting photographs and printing them off. This is from um, Goulburn and then painting it and making notes as I paint it. I'll just show you another couple uh, more gum trees. This is a total theme <laughs> um, that uh, I have. And here I'm making lots of notes and I tend to do... <laughs> little smiley faces or angry faces or as a little note to myself about what worked and what uh, didn't. That's to amuse myself. Um, I have masses of photos of butterflies and here I am trying out an idea. I'm pretty sure I saw that on Pinterest too. This is such a cool idea. I didn't quite pull it off but um, so many um, wonderful things, ideas you can find on Pinterest. I'll just show you one more that I tagged here. Um, these are some photographs that my son-in-law took. So I like to work from uh, original photographs. I find that it's, it, I don't know, it adds an extra um, element of interest if you're invested in the photograph somehow. And my son-in-law bought a drone and took these amazing photographs. This is the Warrenora Bridge for anyone who uh, lives in Southern Sydney or anyone who lives uh, in Australia might know the Warrenora Bridge. It's a really big bridge and this amazing these amazing photographs and then I did a series of landscapes from it. But um, they were big dodgy ones that I went on to. Actually, I tore them up and turned them into big collages. Anyway, I'm just going to re-mention for anyone who's just joined me, this is my plan is that today we use a triangle as a background, we're going to do some thumbnails first. Go back to my little list. Oh, no, I know. I'll just talk about the order for a second. The order in which we'll do it today is thumbnails. Because you want to get your design sorted. That's a very bad pen. Swap to another one. Uh, then we're going to sketch that up. Then we'll put on tape, as in masking tape. That tape will go on the inside of that triangle. And then we will do some masking fluid. So we will mask everything on the outside of the triangle. So tape on the inside, mask on the outside, and that means that when you put the tape down, if any of the masking fluid touches it, we can't, it won't matter if we accidentally pull off the tape because we'll paint the background first. So that's the order I'm thinking. Thumbnail, tape as in masking tape on the inside, mask, mask the design on the outside. And um, I'm just going to scroll down on my messages list in case someone asks me something please do ask questions it really helps me know um, how I'm traveling in terms of um, anything that I might have missed because you know kind of sitting here in a room on my own and <laughs> it's your comments that really really help me uh, work out how you're traveling um, where am I up to uh, thumbnail tape mask and then we'll paint so We'll do the thumbnail tape and masking and then at this point that's when we'll start to talk about colour um, before we paint. That way the masking fluid will partially dry and uh, we'll have a hairdryer. If, oh, I put that on that basic list here. Got lists everywhere. 
Uh, I noted down here a hair dryer, which will be kind of cool to have on hand to dry in between uh, layers because I don't want my uh, beautiful brushes going anywhere near wet masking fluid. Okay, that's my plan. That's what I'm thinking about for the design. Um, the masking fluid I've got on hand, I've got, um, this is called, I'm not going to be using a brush today. I use a little thing called an angle chisel. It's a tool that's actually designed, I wonder if I can move it closer to the camera. It's a tool that's actually designed, it's got a little rubber tip on it. It's actually designed for pastel, I understand. And, um, but because it's got this little rubber tip, when you put it in the masking fluid, it's really easy to peel off. A brush will work just fine. Just make sure it's one you don't love because masking fluid will slowly ruin your um, brushes. I'm going to zoom out for a second and show you my basic setup. Wrong way. That's, that's me. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more. And there. Okay. Um, I've got jars, palette. I've got some colors, but as I mentioned, I'll talk more de in more detail about the color when we, while our masking fluid dries. I've got some brushes, masking fluid. You'll need masking tape today if you're going to use my method. I've got a ruler so that my triangle is straight um, and a pencil. Are you ready to start? thinking about your thumbnail, I'm going to get a cheap piece of paper to start sketching. Just dumping that one on the floor. Get a cheap piece of paper. I'm going to design Excuse me, leaning across there. I'm going to design some thumbnails. I can zoom back in. Just zoom in a little more. And I'm going to design thinking about, firstly, what orientation is your paper? Today I'm going to be uh, designing something with a landscape orientation, but that's your first place to start is a quick thumbnail that suggests the orientation of your paper. Then, that, So that's your first decision. And I know I'm going to be painting it landscape partly because it fits really beautifully onto the uh, screen that you'll all be watching um, so orientation, and then if you're going to follow along with that idea, you're thinking, okay, there'll be a triangle in the center, and then I'm going to grab my fuchsia. Um, I picked a big branch worth this morning. I'm going to just break one off. They truly are like ballerinas, and they, in the wind, they actually dangle like that. I think they are so incredibly beautiful. Um, going Just going back to my marker, I'm thinking, well, perhaps I need to think about the interior of the triangle and the exterior. And I want some of these little dangly bits and definitely the stamen um, to possibly dangle outside a little bit of planning about um, fairies, ballet dresses, <laughs> fairies, ballet dresses, as in this is like the um, ballet, this ballet skirt, isn't it? I think that's what Karen might mean. Uh, so I'm thinking about um, how to design it in the space. So perhaps the stalk comes down and some of the little parts of the fuchsia comes off like that. That's my first idea. Second idea, thumbnails are designed to be fast. I'm just running through ideas here. Here's my orientation, here's my triangle. I'm gonna switch 
to a pen so that you can still see it, but that is um, too awkward for me to... The fat line over the fat line is not working for me. Uh, so perhaps this time the fuchsia comes from this side and it's got a lump and a lump and then these beautiful curvy outside and then the centre of the fuchsia. You could do five fuchsias, one fuchsia. You get to decide at this point. But this is what I'm thinking about is that there's a central triangle and I want some bits that go outside that central um, triangle. Yes, says Karen. Thank you. I'm quite liking this design already. I'm just going to do that again in case you're all still thinking, oh, what will my design be? So I'm going to just do it again. Here's the, oh, I'll use the thick one to say these are the elements that I know, my orientation, and that there'll be a triangle in the centre. Uh, this one came swinging down this way, so perhaps this one swings this way. So I'll just turn the fuchsia. Perhaps the stalk actually swings this way. Then I've got the green bit and then the white bit, and then these beautiful wings. The thumbnail is something that is fast. You're just getting your ideas sorted. Anyone who's done lessons with me knows that I don't spend long on the thumbnail at all because for me the fun is in the painting. I quite like that design. That's fine as well. So I'm just going to do a bigger version orientation triangle and this is going to be dark on the inside of the triangle and that's going to be light on the outside of the triangle okay redo which design do I like the most yet yeah, this one here I quite liked this coming in from the left and um uh I had the stalk swinging that way then the green then the white then there's this wing. I'm going to make it swing in and out of the triangle. Front facing petal here. And there's the side one and swings down like that. The center of the fuchsia, this magnificent ball ish shape. It's kind of like a bell, I think would be a better description. Very much like a bell. And then these fuchsias, and I, uh, then these stamen. I really like the idea that these stamen swing out. My stamen will be half in the triangle and half out of the triangle. Uh, so I've now got a design, and then I'm pretty much just going to go in and commit to it. I'm hoping this session will go for an hour, and we'll all have painted for an hour and feel satisfied, but I, I don't think I... We'll go much longer than that, so I'm going to just move some stuff aside. I've got an eraser, I've got a pencil, and I'm going to get a really lovely piece of paper now. Pop my design up in front of me. Here it is. I'm going to pop it in front of me and very vaguely copy it. Very, very vaguely. It's only ever a guideline and that's all it's going to be. So just talking for a second about my paper. I'm painting at the moment on Baohong. And um, if you know this brand and you are um, Chinese, yes, made in China, then it's probably pronounced with a really lovely sing-song Baohong kind of thing. And apologies if I sound stupid then. Uh, it's 300 GSM. It's rough or for anyone American tuning in, it's 140 pounds. Acid-free, 100% cotton. Um, it's rough. I said that already. It's repeat, That information is repeated down here. And I'm painting on a quarter sheet, which is uh, 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. And a quarter sheet is 
so named because it's um, cut down from a full sheet of paper. When you paint big, then um, you purchase sheets that are 56 by 76, generally speaking. No real rules, are there? There's just guidelines everywhere. Anyway, this paper is absolutely beautiful. And if I hold it up, is it possible to see some of the texture on it? Not really. It's just making the light go weird. Yep, it didn't um, like that. I'm going to have to turn off one of those lights because it's doing a weird thing. Uh, the light switch is two seconds away. Bear with me. Tape up your um, all four sides of your paper. It's a little less light, but at least it's not um, doing that weird streaming thing at, at you. I'm going to tape down all four sides. I'll just um, move out a little bit so you can see me taping. Painting's like the perfect thing to do during lockdown. Turning on the news every day is just so depressing. And painting just completely takes you away from thinking about that. Just running my fingers over it. And then I'll get a lovely connection between the masking tape and the paper, keep the masking tape close by. I'm going to use a ruler to sketch in an accurate, well, when I say accurate, I just mean level. I'm just gonna make sure this is lined up nicely with the bottom of the paper. And I'm going to very lightly sketch in a triangle. And I'm just use eyeballing it. Is it even? I could take that one a little bit further or I could knock that end down a little bit. Just want it to vaguely be even. Knock it down a little bit more. Mm, yep, that'll do. And then I'm going to say, okay, that's the center and that's gonna be my triangle. And again, really, really, really light pressure. Don't want to see this triangle at the end, so I'm barely touching it. Oh, someone else has joined us. Welcome. Please make comments or ask questions. I would love to hear from you. And I'd love to answer any questions. Okay, I know that's hard to see, um, but you'll have to believe me when I tell you there is a triangle that goes all the way along there. all the way along there. And this distance is close to that distance. This is actually a bit bigger, doesn't matter. The beauty of working on paper is that I can cut that down if it bothers me later on. So I'm gonna go back to my design. This is the one I've chosen. I'm just gonna fold it so I don't look at the others. Just fold that down and go, okay, I am going to very lightly sketch a really simplified version of this fuchsia onto here. I liked this section here, but I could include more of the top. So I think I'll put in a pencil mark that swings this way. I'm gonna go back to my fuchsia and go, okay, what really happens at this point? There's this bobbly bit and a bobbly bit. And uh, if there's any botanists who are out there, I'd love some of the names. It goes out. I'm going to zoom in there so hopefully you can see that. Hopefully that's a little better because I'm pressing lightly. Uh, 
comes in and then I'm doing a really light sketch and I'm going to now refer as much as possible to the object in my hand because then you'll start to put in details that you um, wouldn't. Um, Julie says, I've just purchased some only paper available at my supplier in Melbourne at the moment. You're in Melbourne, Julie, so you're in lockdown too, which um, is it's, uh, it's really horrible lockdown. But uh, Melbourne, God, you had the longest lockdown, didn't you? Though apparently Sydney's going to have um, a really, really long lockdown too. We don't know. Anyway, I'm thinking about how I want this outside petal, this one here, to swing down. I'm not being accurate about botanically. I'm thinking designally. I'm always thinking about the design. For me, that rules way more important than um, being botanically correct. For me, of course, everyone is incredibly um, different about that. Okay, that's come down. I'm still sketching up. Apologies for the fact that it's hard to see. It's because I need to press lightly. But you just want to be thinking about what is inside and outside of the triangle because we're going to do some masking on the outside. I'm just going to move my design out of the way because I'm focusing on looking at my petals. Now this petal in front actually covers some of my design. I'm going to just cut it off and change it because I want to be able to see the um, bell-shaped part of my fuchsia. That's okay, Julie, no worries. It's beautiful paper though. I use lots of brands and um, that's just one of many beautiful brands that are available. I'm going to sketch in the other side of the bell over there and then have my stamen come out. The stamen are in fact quite, if I hold them there, quite um, vertical or horizontal, no, vertical, <laughs> they hang down. And I'm going to be very arty about that. So some I will have come down this way, some I will have come down that way. I'm just using it to my, to, to the effect that I want it to have. So I'm spreading them out just because I think visually that can look really interesting. And I want some on the outside of the triangle because that's where I'm going to mask. And okay. Um, these ones are um, looking a little bit long. But I think I could... Um, Yeah, that one looks a little bit like that. This one I like. This one, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll include the fourth. There's um, one, two, three, four 
I'm going to include that fourth one to come down there and that will interrupt that shape looking a bit like a bird and I'll cut it off. I think that's just fine. Now it's time to grab the masking tape. Very important <laughs> that the tape is done before the masking fluid. Masking tape. I'm going to tape the inside of the triangle. This is going to make the painting the outside really easy. I'm lining it up ever so carefully with my triangle there and run my finger along the outside. I'm going to tear, get it to the end and then tear it off. Get it to the end there. I'm just going to bend it over. I might just bend it backwards. That's a good idea. Oh, that's worked just fine. I've just bent it over on the sticky side. Okay, that's one edge. Stick it down using that spare bit. I didn't get quite get to this edge. Doesn't matter. Next bit. Inside the edge, you are putting masking tape, I hope, on the inside of your triangle. And I'm going to bend that one back again. <laughs> you can see that I'm just winging it here because and struggling to get the tape there struggling to make that tape do what I needed and one more piece on the bottom and on the inside of your triangle inside 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 Run my finger along the outside where the masking tape is hopefully beautifully in contact. Oh, I forgot about that little corner there. I'm just going to get an extra little bit so that I'm going to tear it up. I want it to have a cute edge to it. So I'm just taking a little bit of extra time to get that done. Once that's done, and you totally don't have to do this stage of um, masking the tape if you're like, eh, I can freehand it, that's fine. Now, I'm going to mask anything that is outside the triangle so that I can paint. Ask me anything you like about masking fluid often comes with a little bit of um, pigment in it. This one does. It's blue. I like blue. It's really easy to see. Um, so I'm gently agitating it. If you shake it, it gets bubbles. And sometimes that's a bit annoying to paint with. Lots of people say don't shake masking fluid because it makes the little, I don't know, molecules of masking fluid bind to each other. I don't find that ever happens. The lumps that come inside masking fluid just come regardless of the brand I buy or the way I, I um, shake it. I So I shake it all the time. Okay, I'm left-handed. So I'm going to keep the little fuchsia over there. So I'm left-handed, so I'm going to mask on this side of the page and work backwards purely so that I don't get masking fluid in my um, on my sleeve. I mentioned the little shaper. If you're working with a brush, you might want to protect it with a little bit of liquid soap. And um, I talked about that in the video that I um, have just released about, I'm going to zoom in, about on the video I just released about masking fluid and watercolour pouring. 
Uh, can I zoom in? I wonder if I can, if I can make it. Oh, yeah, it'll just be in screen there. That's a little bit better. See. I'm going to slowly mask it. The thinner the layer, the quicker it will dry. I never use this tool on a second layer because it uh, makes marks in the layer below. I might leave some gaps on that little part of the fuchsia. So, um, for example, if I'm doing a watercolour pour with um, masking fluid, I'm just going to change the camera so you can see me. Um, move down to this corner. Can you see that corner there? Yes. There, that's it. Lovely. Um, I'm masking the stamen on the outside of the triangle now. So I never use this tool on the second layer of a watercolour pour or the second layer of any masking fluid and watercolour painting. If you're doing multiple layers, you want to use um, something soft like a watercolour brush but you don't want to use a watercolour brush you like. It will, masking fluid adheres to paper brilliantly but releases. It also adheres to your watercolour brushes and eventually you can't get it off. I'm going to put a little, little splatter just here. And it didn't splatter, it just went straight into um, the bits that are there. Oh, that's better. Some little drops. I'm not going to be too ridiculous with my dripping because it will flick onto me. And that stuff is impossible to get out of your clothing unless you whip your clothing off and get it into water within a matter of seconds. And... Uh, I'm not sure that would be the right thing to do on a YouTube live session. Right. Okay, that's the right-hand side done. I'm going to zoom out a little so you can see how it's going. And now I'm going to move over to the other side. Keep my little fuchsia close by so that you're constantly inspired by the real deal. Oh, someone else has joined us. Please comment or say anything or ask a question or anything at all would be very cool. Okay, masking fluid. I'm going to... I'm doing kind of like scratching marks, which will mean that there'll be some paint that will be able to paint in between. Masking up here, and again, I'm doing scratching marks. The other beauty to the scratching marks is that, apart from allowing the paint to, oops, made a mistake, just, just correcting that, is that you'll allow the paint Right, finish your sentence. <laughs> it's so hard to um, work and talk and teach all at the same time. The, the the advantage to the scratching marks is that some of the paint will go inside the fuchsia. Um, plus also it, it'll give a lovely texture to the flower. So <laughs> apologies when I get halfway through a sentence and not finish my sentence. When I'm making videos, I can edit all that out where I'm like, ah, uh, and then I forget to finish what I was saying. Um, right, I'm ready for this last little, oh, there's a um, petal here and a petal there, and then I'm done. 
and then we can talk about colour while it partially dries and I'm assuming it won't be quite dry enough to paint so that is when I'm going to whip out the hairdryer and break one of the fundamental rules of applying masking fluid which is don't apply heat. Turns out you can. Could be the brand, could be that it's not summer, could be the way the masking fluid was stored. I don't know. You can only um, experiment and enjoy yourself. It's painting, so it's about pleasure and switching off from everything you have to think about in your day. And at the moment, there's so much bad news. It's really nice to paint and not think about it. Again, I've left some little tiny bits here in the um, masking fluid. And because this has got a little rubber tip, all I'm going to do is grab a tissue and wipe it off. And if there's any that does dry on it, it just peels off a little bit later. So that's really easy. I'm going to put the lid straight on so it doesn't continue to dry out. And I'm going to put this board aside to talk about our colour scheme. I'm just moving everything aside so we can talk colour. So I'm going to get rid of this board. You'll see my table towel for a second. Grab another board, another piece of paper. Right, let's talk colour. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And um, bring my palette over so that it's in view. Hey, someone gave me a thumbs up. Thank you. Really appreciate that. It makes, um, it makes a difference. I really love the thumbs up. I'm stunned at how um, that makes, um, gives me a little lift and makes me think, oh, keep going, do more. Um, no, I'm going to swap it around. I'm left-handed. Okay. There's my color palette. I'm going to write down the colors. If I write it just with a pen, hopefully you can still see it. Yellow, I'm using, they're all Holbein, permanent yellow lemon. If you happen to have the colors I have, that's great. If not, ask me about substitutes. Uh, and for the yellow, I don't find there's a huge variation because it's the lightest color and, you know, really gets some um, subjugated by other colors. Okay, in terms of blue, I'm going to put a big B there for blue. I'm using ultramarine. Ultramarine, the blue in particular. I'm using ultramarine deep, so I'll write that on there, deep. Hopefully you can still see that. And I'm going to make a purple using ultramarine deep and this one. So I'm going to put a big triangle with a big R for red. And I don't tend to paint really with red. I actually use pinks instead. And the pink, for me, that's my red that I'm going to be using today is quinacridone opera. It's opera if you um, end up loving this pink. And in particular, it's quinacridone opera. I'm going to combine ultramarine and my pink and make purple. I know that they make a magnificent purple, and that's partly why I don't use red. Uh, reds and blues, depending on the type of red, you, you end up with brownie, weird 
uh, color combinations, which is why I tend to work with pink, um, opera rose, that kind of thing, quinacridone rose. Um, I know that they are going to mix with any blue and make some magnificent pink. Now, the other color that I have with me today is um, cobalt tur turquoise light. And um, I could squeeze out some of my palette. There's a little – I did clean this up, believe it or not. I could squeeze some out on the, my palette, but um, it will mix with the existing blue in there. So I've got a little soy sauce dish. I have lots of them available, about 10 actually. And then I can store extra paint and in them and reuse them. I'm squeezing out a big fat peas worth of – um, I'll see if there's a bit more there, of cobalt turquoise light. It actually cost me $19. Sometimes I write the price on um, my tubes. Uh, I used to wonder which pigments were expensive and which was which weren't. So I, I bought that quite a while ago. That's the old packaging for Holbein. Um, so some blue, that's... Um, I'll add that to the list here, cobalt, turquoise, light. These are all transparent. No, these two are transparent and cobalt, turquoise, light and ultramarine deep, both of the blues are semi-transparent. All watercolour is actually transparent. It's a transparent medium. But some are more transparent than others, which always reminds me of Animal Farm. Some are more equal than others. Always feels like I'm making a judgment about <laughs> the colours, which, yes, I know that's ridiculous. Okay, I'm going to squeeze out some permanent yellow lemon. Again, about a pea-sized amount. I love squeezing out fresh paint. You might be using pans and you might just activate some. That's my yellow and the ultramarine deep. I've already squeezed that in there. I used up a tube this morning and squeezed that all out. So that's ready. And I'll squeeze out some fresh opera, quinacridone opera, kind of just magnificent pink. I've been using this a lot. It's so beautiful. And it's like a best friend that can turn up to any party and uh, just make you look good. Uh, that's the pink. Um, now then, how are we going? I'm going to mix up some colours now. I use a pipette. Add a little water, add a little water, add a little water. I'm adding water to all my colours. And then I can grab my brush. I'm using... A black gold 311. This is a size. I'm turning in. Where's the, where's this? There it is. Zero. I was trying to find where the size was there. Zero. And uh, you could just talk all day about brushes. My first live stream, I talked just about brushes. Okay. I'm mixing up a batch of yellow. Need to decide what the color is going to be for the outside of your um triangle so here's my little thumbnail if I did yellow on the outside and yellow on the inside you really don't have a great tonal range so I'm not going to use yellow to paint over my masking fluid blue will work brilliantly and pink will work br brilliantly I'm going to mix a purple I'm going to grab a stack of that beautiful ultramarine deep and pick up half of that pink because I know it's going to make this magic purple and then I'm going to paint the outside dark and the inside will be if I just get some water I'll show you put some water there get more water pink oh pink I've got pink on the brain pale tone the inside will be pale toned So I'm just doing that on my thumb now to give you an idea of where we're heading. Uh, I've, I'm going to just activate this cobalt turquoise. I'm not, I'm not completely sure what I'm going to do with it. 
but I'm just going to have it ready. If and then, if I feel like it, I can use it if I want to. Right, I'm going to zoom out so you can see my palette. Just getting the camera to move so that Okay, I can now put my palette in position. I've got purple, I've got dark purple and light purple ready to paint. We're going to paint the dark purple um, first, remove the tape, which is in this position, and then paint the other purple, the light pale purple. Don't forget to ask any questions if you have any Okay, I'm putting my other board back in position so you can see that from above and just move it so that it's central. There's my fuchsia. I'm going to keep that in front of me the whole time. Um, I love how at any moment I can look at it to decide what kind of uh, detail I might add. Now, this masking fluid is completely wet and I'm going to grab my hairdryer and dry it off and um, apply heat to masking fluid, which is usually a no-no, okay? So forgive the noise. I've just muted myself so that the, the sound of my loud hair dryer isn't driving you insane. And um, I must remember to turn it back on when I start talking again. Okay, I've remembered to turn my microphone back on, so that's pretty cool. I want the masking fluid to be at such a stage that you can touch it with your hand and it doesn't come off. So I'm checking everywhere because I like to paint with um, my beautiful brush and I want to make sure that... None of it's going to come off on my um, beautiful brush. Okay, hopefully you've got now a puddle of dark purple and a puddle of pale purple. And we're going to do dark on the outside and pale purple on the inside. So we'll paint the outside and then we'll remove the masking tape, which may take off some of the masking fluid if it's attached like mine is. But that won't be a problem because we'll have finished the outside. So um, here's my big puddle of um, purple. I'm going to get my biggest mop brush. Um, 
a Harker brush is rather marvellous at this point too. Uh, actually, I might do the Harker brush because it's cheap. And just in case I haven't completely dried this, um, this masking fluid, if this is like $5 versus, you know, $50. So I think I'll go to the cheap one. Okay, I've got some water here. And I'm going to liberally add water around the edge. All around, liberally. Come in a little closer. Kind of like doing a vignette of water at the moment. There. Dump that one and grab some of that purple. And very quickly, that's the beauty of spending all your time, not all your time, of spending time preparing uh, the painting with masking fluid is that this painting process, painting this background, is going to be over in a heartbeat. Oh, I've run out of paint. Okay, don't do that. Prepare enough paint so that you don't run out like I just did. Mind you, I've got fresh paint, so remixing is uh, so fast because... I had the fresh paint there. Oh, this is why I love masking fluid because painting over it is so easily done. I'm going to get rid of any bits I've missed, run the brush really close to all the masking fluid. I don't want any bits missed. And I'm getting this beautiful watercolour, wet in wet effect. My doorbell's about to ring. I'm very I'm apologetic about that because I can see someone pulling up. I'm going to tip, so forgive the doorbell if it goes off. If I'm lucky, he'll just dump it. I'm tipping it on an angle. Can you see me tipping it here? And it's dripping, making a big mess. There's the doorbell. So just ignore that. I'm tipping it on a big angle to get rid of the excess moisture. Some of it was just about to tip into my uh, triangle. So I'm tipping it the other way, using lots of tissues just to gather it all up. I'm going to get the hairdryer to it in a minute, but first gathering all of that beautiful excess colour up and just go this way as well. So can you see that um, granulate, that granulation? I'll just move it closer to the camera. It is madly granulating, and that's the ultramarine deep, the whole bind um, ultramarine deep does this beautiful uh, effect. Just while I'm there... I might pick a little bit of ultramarine and maybe darken a little, couple of little bits while I'm there. Putting the masking fluid will be removed and make and have um, secured the white of the paper. So if I put some lovely dark color next to it, then it will really draw attention because you'll have the lightest light of the paper next to the darkest dark. Okay, I'm just going to tip that again, move it about. It's a little bit wet, so it's doing beautiful things as it moves. So I'm going to keep it on an angle and dry it so you'll have to forgive the noise of the hairdryer because I'm going to be holding it on an angle and just I want all that extra moisture gone and I'm just going to dry it briefly no more than a minute say
Might have been a minute, might have been longer. Okay. Just get rid of some of these big drips down here. All right, if I'm lucky, the masking tape in the center has held its ground and hasn't allowed any paint to go inside. Ooh, so far so good. Okay, it's working well. It's taking off some of the masking fluid, but that's just fine. Hey, there's my triangle. I'm now going to um, paint some of the inside uh, with a little bit. I'm going to switch brushes. This is also a uh, Black Gold 311. It's a triple zero. So um, oh, if I move that closer, that might help. Not really. There, triple zero. It's a quill and it's got a lovely, I love the length of the bristle. I'm going to use the pale version of the purple. You can use any color you like. If you're following along with me, then the purpose of changing tone is just so that it looks um, the shape of the triangle will pop. So I'm going to carefully paint on the inside of the triangle, reload. Pale, pale tone. And as we all know, a pale tone in watercolor means that you're using lots of water. I'm just going carefully around my shape. So I'm continuing the negative painting, but this time I don't have masking fluid. I'm taking my time to paint between the shapes between the stamen. I'm avoiding touching the side because it's still half wet. But if it does touch the side when you're painting, it might look really lovely if you allow some of that paint to run in. There, I'm going to touch that side and see. Yeah, it's half wet. And so it's barely, oh, that's nice. I'm just touch, just tickling that edge, it's lovely. Uh, that one goes up there, doesn't it? I've got the most enormous bloom. <laughs> ah, that's what happens when you're not watching. I'm so focusing on um, keeping the pace going with the with the. Uh, YouTube live that I wasn't watching this enormous bloom appear up above. One little bit extra up here in that part of the triangle. I'm going to touch that edge. Just tickle the brush along the edge of the triangle and allow it to mingle. It's barely mingling. It's mostly dry up there. All right, now we're ready for, to add some detail to the inside of the fuchsia. Um, the only rule of masking fluid that I will always adhere to is wait until the paper is completely dry before removing the masking fluid. And um, I've already gone over the hour, so I'm not quite sure whether or not um, I might be m removing the masking fluid Um I'm so nervous about putting my hair dryer back onto the masking fluid. Having spent, uh, you know, 20 years using masking fluid and always uh, adhering to the rule of don't apply heat to it, 
it just feels wrong to the idea that I would put the hairdryer back on that masking fluid. Anyway, just moving my sleeve up so I can start to paint on the inside of the, uh, the fuchsia. And um, this is where I'm going to use some of the turquoise. I'm completely aware that it's uh, not even slightly uh, in keeping with the real colours of the fuchsia, but, you know, stick to your own colour palette. Use colours that you love always. I'm going to use this turquoise. And uh, where shall I start? On the bell or the... Yeah, I'm going to start on the bell because that, the bell is what I want, Where is where I want most of the colour. I'm going to allow that to touch the outside. Not a problem there. And that goes up and into that. Now I'm going to dump that brush, pick up a little bit of my purple, my dark purple, and put in some darks on the edge. Oh, how beautiful is that? And I put some darks there. Go back to my turquoise. I switch brushes. It just makes me a little faster and do this little sector here. Hopefully you've drawn in a simplified flower and then your, your pace will be similar to mine. And if yours is complex, then Hopefully you'll just keep going and painting. I'm adding more darks. Go back to my turquoise. Just paint a little bit more. This petal goes across like that. I'm going to add a little water to that petal on that side. Get a little bit of tonal variation happening. And go back to the dark, beautiful dark purple. Everywhere I imagine there's some sort of shadow is where I'm adding little bits of dark. And wherever you feel like it as well. Okay. Where am, I haven't done under there. And, yeah, I think I will paint in some turquoise and then I'll drop in some purple for the under side of the bell of the just dropping in my darks because the underside of the bell is much darker I'm going to touch the outside I don't know why I'm whispering um, that's pretty good. Now, I squeezed out some lemon and I'd like to um, introduce lemon here because if I'm lucky, I'll have lemon here next to the purple and it might look, <laughs> who knows. I am just um, making it up as I go along with the colours. I'm going to put lemon across here. This is the top side of the petal. That petal, I'm going to let it touch the edges and allow those colours that are next to it, that purple and some of that turquoise, to flow in. And then I'm going to, I've got purple on this little brush, I'll just get rid of that. Into that yellow, I'm going to drop turquoise maybe around here maybe some little detail go back to my lemon and paint this one I'm going to allow it again to touch the bell touch the outside switch brushes or some turquoise detail. I'm making a really beautiful green mixing on the page. I often mix colors on the page rather than in the palette, particularly in watercolor because you've got this awesome opportunity. Oh no, I missed a bit in the corner. You've got this awesome opportunity in watercolor to allow one color 
to flow, switching back to my turquoise, to another colour. It's the beauty of painting wet and wet. Uh, back to my yellow, touching the outside colours. I don't need to be careful. That purple, that pale purple is pretty much dry. Back to my turquoise. Just dropping in little bits of colour. Now, some of this turquoise could go on the stamen, turquoise. Using this really fine brush just to drag it along. Just putting in little touches there. All right, looking good. I'm just going to touch up this little corner. I missed a bit of the um, pale purple. Clean that brush off. Get rid of the excess moisture. I do not want it wet. I only want to have the colour that the colour that is um, that the brush holds, but I don't want too much moisture. Um, all right. I'm going to fix up these little bits while they're lovely and wet. I'm going to grab some ultramarine and put in some darks there, some dark there. Ultramarine is a wonderful dark purple, a oh, dark purple. It's a wonderful dark colour. Oh, all the yellow has run in there. It's very beautiful. Um, I'm just putting in little bits of dark. Ultramarine, little touches here and there. Um, maybe there's some darks in there. Maybe some darks in there. I'm just using the ultramarine for anywhere that I want a shape to pop or a shape hasn't popped in the way that you want. I'm using it for darks. I Pretty much never use black. Okay, it's coming along nicely. Now, I can pull this little bit of masking fluid because it was sitting up a little bit. But if I go rubbing this masking fluid to remove it, the paint around it will just all do a yucky, spready, mucky thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I really need it to be dry in order to remove the masking fluid. So... If you're willing to hang in there, I think I should just risk it and put the hairdryer onto the masking fluid so that this can be a complete lesson uh, and we can do any little tying off of details at the end. Okay, so bear with me while I dry it. I'm going to focus the hairdryer on the masking fluid where the paint is so that I can remove the masking fluid. Okay. I'm going to switch it on and then mute. Okay, I remember to turn the microphone back on. I'm going to grab a masking fluid eraser, which is um, just really it's a piece of rubber.
My erasers are yucky because I've used them over and over. So it's just a piece of rubber that makes removing the masking fluid really easy, but you could just remove it with your finger as well. And I'm going to be reasonably careful because I, I've i dried it, but not for very long. All right, that came off okay. The granulation is beautiful. I love taking off the little dots of masking fluid. Oh, that's interesting. Mask that it didn't work. The paint's gone underneath. Interesting. Those worked. That delightful little bits there. I take it back about that not working. I think that maybe I just dropped a bit. Okay, it's coming off so easily. It's totally going to change the way I use masking fluid. And this bit here is where I did lots of scratchy kind of marks with the masking fluid. just going to decide now are there any um, little bits left that I need to adjust often what I do at the end of a painting with masking fluid I'm just looking for the right brush let's get a flat brush this is a really thin brush this is also black gold um, it's a really thin it's like a little tiny flat brush but it's got a particular name doesn't tell me on here. This is a quarter, tells me the size, that's all. I'm gonna wet it, remove the excess moisture on my towel. Actually, I'll do it on a tissue and that's easier for you to see. Wet the brush, remove the excess moisture and soften some of the edges. If I soften it up there, you're less likely to look up there. I'm gonna soften some edges where I think it might needed or where it's drawing attention but not in a good way or well there's lots of reasons why you might soften lots and um, just going to soften that there it soften the edge and of course it watercolor is soluble so you can soften it and bring the color gently into I was going to say the object. You can bring the colour gently into the shape, really. I'm just softening. A bit awkward for my hand on that angle. Oh, soften there. That's a good spot to soften. I'm constantly dipping into the water and then removing the excess, and that allows you to have a damp brush that allows softening. Right, anywhere else? I've lost the edge of my triangle, so I'm just going to run it in that direction to reclaim that edge. Or oh, definitely bring some of this blue in, beautiful dark blue down there. I'm going to soften all of that. Drag that out. Okay. 
Thanks for hanging in there. It's really cool. This one uh, has taken so much longer than the other one. Next week I won't do um, masking fluid. Um, having said that, if the subject is going to be jasmine, it's pretty hard to paint it um, if you want to paint a background around jasmine. Um, but it's possible to negatively paint the the jasmine, of course. It could just, um, oh, there's just so many ways to paint jasmine. But masking fluid does take a lot longer. Masking fluid also requires that bit of planning in order to paint it. I'm just going to soften under there as well. All across the little skirt of the, just little little tiny touches here and there. Last week uh, we used a bit of mixed media to finish off with the gold pen. That was just, a mu that was so much fun finishing off with a switching to another media right at the end. But I'm not going to do that with this one today. Um, I'm just going to zoom in while I talk about the final adjustments. Zoom in a little further. Talk to, just to look if I go that way. There. Okay. This is the moment when you want to look at your painting and um, be thinking about what changes. Um, uh, if Helen, uh, if you're listening, Helen, then uh, you, this is the just moment. Um, Helen suggested that if you say to yourself, I'm just going to, then you might be um, going a little bit too far. Karen says, this has been a great class. Still going. I kept up. Oh, really? Just doing the inside of petals. Excellent. Homework. <laughs> Love it. Oh, that's great, Karen. I was wondering about the pace. I've kind of got to keep it going to be interesting, but um, because it becomes a video uh, available to everyone after this. But at the same time, um, um, not to go too slow, but not to go too fast so that you can paint along. So I'm really delighted that you're able to paint along at the same time. Uh, so I'm thinking, what changes do I want to make? Some of the things I think about at this point are tonal variation. I've got some lovely lights and some lovely darks. Do, do I want to add some more? Maybe. So this is bothering me a little bit. I'm going to get a little tiny brush again. This is my little tiny uh, liner brush. It's a size 6 Richardson. And I'm thinking that I will add little tiny details on this part of the um, fuchsia, this bulbous part, just to just to define it a little bit. I think that's a little better. I'm going to use that little flat brush and feather that out. Feather out, feather out. Alison's there. Hello, Alison. Just joined. We'll have to watch back again. Yes. Hey, that's nice. And Karen says, no, I didn't. Bad typing. Petals, homework. I'm not quite sure which bit was the, um, which was the bad typing. It all just seemed to make sense to me. Uh, yeah, I'm adding little tiny details of dark. Mm, where else? Oh, I know on these. Definitely on these stamen, they could do with little dark bits. Try not to be even about it. Trying to be uneven. Oh, that's better. I think the stamen look much better with a little bit um, of, de of detail. Maybe, maybe I define that shape a little bit here. Just going to soften that out as well. Soften that. I might continue it down. That's cool. And this is a little bit weak over here, so I'm going to grab some darks and maybe, mm, I know, I will make this dark here 
and then it will start on the inside and go to the outside and then I'm just using I'm switching all the time to the triple zero to soften that and soften that out I quite like that that's a little more connected and that's looking a little bit odd there so I'm going to make that yeah I'm going to redefine this line because it's just not making sense that it goes down there and out that's better going back to the triple zero to just soften all of that there that's making way more sense I think and this one wants the same treatment so this comes down and a little bit of dark there and up dark and I'm going to join that up there because it really bothers me that the edge is messy Just picked up a little bit of masking fluid. I'm just trying to get that off without making a mess. That's better. And um, I think I'll make uh, do the same here. Back to my liner brush and make this come up and into there, just to make it kind of just kind kind of creating some connections from the base to the top. It's very much about um, personal choice at the end. It's where you just, you rely a bit on your intuition and you make those decisions about what looks good. But you can also think in terms of um, tonal variation. You can think in terms of warm versus cool. Uh, and I've got a big warm with this pop of yellow against the cool background. The background is completely purple and blue and very cool. And then I've got a pop of yellow that I hope is bringing your um, focus right into the fuchsia. So I'm getting to the just moment, which is, oh, I think I'll just, and I'm going to avoid doing any just anything. I'm going to remove the tape. And I find that removing the tape really helps in terms of thinking, oh, look, it's done. I've had a good time. I've gotten to be creative for a while. And uh, is it worth signing or will it be one that I just stick in my sketchbook or does it just become um, – uh, well, even if it becomes a card, like, you know, as in I'm just going to gently fold it, it's still quite damp. Even if it becomes a card and I turn it over like that, fabulous card, um, then I'll still sign it. Is it dry enough for me to sign? Oh, yeah. Okay. I like to sign it immediately as well because I will use the colours that I've used in the painting. So I'm going to go ahead and sign I use the uh, liner brush. Marion. Chapman. And I've now finished my third YouTube live. This is going reasonably well. Uh, it's so weird to be in lockdown. I'm just moving into the center there. So weird to be in lockdown and not going out all the time and teaching in all the places that I usually teach. And um, so weird not seeing physically all the people that I normally see. <laughs> it's, it is a bizarre, bizarre time. Oh, um, I can't resist adding some little dots. Those um, white dots were bothering me, so I'm going to add a little bit of blue. And I'm trying not to say the word just because I am fiddling, but but I think it's a good fiddle. I'm just adding. I'm just, listen to me, I'm saying it. <laughs> uh, oh, I think that's better. No, it needs some blue up here. I could do this for another hour, just adjusting the beautiful colors it's um 
the risk is that I don't make the painting better. Now, I told you that taking the masking fluid off stopped me fiddling, but guess that's not completely true. <laughs> anyway, uh, I can't thank you enough for joining me. And thank you for giving me a thumbs up. Yes, please do give me a thumbs up if you got anything out of it. Um, this is completely wonderful. I'm thinking that the subject next Thursday morning will be the jasmine, the white jasmine. So we'll be taking advantage of the white paper. Uh, there's very little white paper left in this one, even though we used masking fluid. But the beauty of the masking fluid was that that background was painted in, in such a tiny period of time. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me. I really, really, really appreciate it. It's wonderful. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. I know most of you have. Uh, subscribe and like. Thank you for the likes. You, you just make, it, it really makes an enormous difference. Thank you, Tiffany. I hope yours looks good. I look forward to seeing your works as well, which has been very cool that you would um, – uh, do that. Yes, Tiffany, some negative painting. Really, that's what we did today. Masking fluid creates a negative space. Uh, but we did it without um we did it without using masking. We did it without you. Oh God. Okay, start again. We used masking fluid to create a negative space and then painted around it. So that's negative painting. But when, if you're like me and you had some of the stamen on the inside, we negatively painted between each of the um, stamen. So that's the other type of negative painting. Much harder to do. You have to have this um, right level of control of how much uh, paint and water is on your brush. If we do uh, jasmine next week, then um, that's a wonderful opportunity for negative painting. We can paint the blooms and then paint on the outside of the uh, the jasmine, which is so beautiful to bring inside because it's all in bloom. But you could just as easily get a photograph of jasmine if you don't happen to have some uh, in your garden or growing nearby. But uh, if you do have some growing nearby, no one minds if you pick their jasmine because it just gets to run riot everywhere, jasmine. It's marvellous. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, yes, yes, no one minds you picking the jasmine. I think that's what Tiffany is talking about. Um, any other thoughts, questions, and um, thank you so much for joining me. This is absolutely wonderful. I will hopefully see you next Thursday at 10 a.m., and this time I'll schedule it well in advance so that you know what we're going to be painting. And um, see you later. Bye, guys.